What's up, YouTube friends? So in the last video, we did our first GitHub commit of all these files that we've been working on. We created a GitHub repository to push all that to. And I mentioned in that last video that the tiny file manager that we've been using is not quite up to the task of integrating with Git. So I thought, you know what? We could start working on that. We could make that happen. So today we're going to take a tiny little baby step in that direction. And what we're going to do is make these folders or files highlight a different color depending on the status, the Git status, as it were, uh, to help you identify when you're looking at them through the Tiny File Manager what stage they're in, if they are changed, if they're staged, or if they are, in fact, unchanged and committed, or we're on the current, uh, whatever you want to call that, version, or the most up-to-date. Uh, so, this is going to be local. It's not going to be based on any remote changes, so if you make local changes, they will be reflected by a highlight in Tiny File Manager. So without talking any more about it, let's get started with that idea. So in our terminal, let's just double check here what our get status is, and it's totally clean. We have nothing to commit. Let's change that. Go into our Tiny File Manager. Let's go into Classes and go into our router.php and take this little example out that we were playing with in our Markdown video a couple of videos ago where we're using our Markdown Extra to add an ID to a header. So we'll take that out. We'll hit Save, Control S, and we'll run Git Status one more time. And now we see we have a file that's modified. All right, cool. All right, let's take it one step further. I'm going to want to see the short version of get status, which is a dash s. And we're going to see something here. Oh, not dash m, dash s. Let's clear this out. Dash s. Okay, we've got an m. But if we look very closely, you'll notice that m is indented by one space. And I'm not going to get too deep into the documentation, but basically there are two characters when you do the short version of get status. There's the first character, and then there's the second character. And that space is the first character. Let's add a file, touch.testphp, and we'll do get status-s again, and you'll see two question marks. Well, the two question marks basically mean this is an untracked file. It is not currently in the index. So what happens if we add one of these files? Well, let's find out. Let's go git add class, uh, yes, classes slash router.php. It is added. Let's do git status dash s again. And now you'll see that it even changes color when you're in the terminal, which is kind of nice, that the M is now moved over to that first character. And effectively, the difference is, is what's in the index versus what's in the working tree. So if it's in that first character, it's basically trying to tell you what's in the index, or staged in this case. Um, and what's in, in the, the second character is what's in the working tree. So before we added it, it was just a change, of an M, a modification in the working tree. And then we added it to the staging area, whatever you want to call it. Maybe we call it the index. Uh, and then it changed to modified in the index. So, and then of course, test.php is still a double question mark untracked, uh, and those double question marks are going to be on both. There, it's not tracked in the index, and it's not tracked in the working tree. So let's see what happens if we git add test.php. Hmm, excuse me. 
we get status dash s, and then we get an a in that first column, meaning that that file has been added, and then nothing in the second column. So, cool. Now we kind of get an idea of how this is going to work. We're going to use the short version of this in order to parse out the, uh, well, those key letters there. Um, but for now, let's back all of that out. I'm going to do git status just so I can see the command that we need to use. And we can use git restore double dash staged classes slash router.php. And then we'll do the same for test.php. And we'll do git status once more. And we'll see that they're all back to where they were. Git status. Uh, dash s to, for the short version. Okay, we're back to where we were. Let's go into our file manager and figure out what we need to find in order to start highlighting things uh, visually in the user interface. All right. So if we right click and inspect, we'll see right away that there is this div that's wrapping around this anchor tag with a link. And that div has a class name of file name. So let's dive in. We'll go into our files.php in our advanced editor. I will hit control F to find, and we're going to search exactly for class equals file name, close quote. And you'll see there's two matches. And if we scroll up a little bit, we'll see that the first block that this occurs in is a for each loop for folders. All right, if we go down to the next one, we click over next two of two, scroll up a little, we'll see that that for each is for files. All right, cool. Um, so it's basically looping through folders and files and then displaying them the way that we're seeing them on the user interface. So we're going to have to do this in two spots. We're going to create a function called um, get status, and we're going to assign it to a variable called get status. So the function get status, and we're just going to pass in the path that it's using right above it, which We'll go ahead and just copy that right in there. Right. And we are going to do the same thing in the files version of it. And what that function is going to return is a style attribute, which will contain the color of the background that we're going to use to highlight that anchor tag. So we'll go down to where it is in the class file name. And we're just going to do an open and close short PHP echo tag. And we'll do dollar get underscore status. Uh, where did that go? Oh, sorry about that, guys. Lost, right, lost track where it was. Okay, so it's going to echo the get status right here in this div class. And we're going to go and actually we'll copy this. And we'll do the same thing down here in the files version of that, which is div class file name right there. Save. So obviously this function doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and We'll just scroll all the way to the bottom and write it. Function get underscore status, and we're going to pass in the path. But for now, just to make sure that we've kind of got something working, let's return uh, a style. Style equals back ground dash color uh, colon, we'll just say yellow for now. Semicolon, save. Go over here to our file manager. 
refresh. Okay, everything's lighting up yellow. All right, so we're, we know we're affecting the change where we want it to be affected. Now we just have to get the status of the file and return what we want to return. So let's start with dollar status equals shell exec get status dash s and then the path, dollar path. And then we're going to take that and we're going to explode it because we know that that's going to be a string separated by new lines. And we'll do status equals explode backslash n and then we'll pass back in the status and now we have an array and the very last item usually when we're exploding on a new line uh, the very last item ends up being uh, empty so we'll do an array pop uh, dollar status And we're going to set up a variable that's going to end up being returned. So we'll call this status to return. And that's what we're going to end up returning at the very end of the function. So we'll go ahead and pop that in status to return. Uh, yep. And the initial setting is just going to be blank. So the reason it's going to be blank is let's say we're using tiny file manager in a directory where there is no Git repository it's not gonna have any of the information that we're looking for. So instead of erroring out and ruining the whole thing, it's just gonna return a blank. It's not gonna style it, it's not gonna do anything. It's gonna to totally be relatively inert. All right, for each dollar status as my, this may not be the most clear way to write this, but I think you guys are kind of following along with what I'm trying to do. So we're going to call this a file because it is a file. I'm calling it status because that's what get status is returning. But get status is returning a file name. So that's why we're going to do it this way. And as I mentioned earlier, maybe I did, maybe I didn't, the, those first couple characters, there's two characters, there's a first character and the second character on whether or not it's either part of the index or the working tree. So we're gonna literally break that out um, exactly like that. In fact, we're gonna even use the way it's documented on the Git website, which they define that as X and Y. So X is gonna equal file, that very first character, for those of you who didn't know that you can access strings like an array, you can. This is how we're doing it. File is a string, and file, open and close bracket zero, is the very first character in that file. And likewise, y equals dollar file, open and close one, is the second character in that string. Okay? We're just gonna very simply check what those characters are. So the one that we're gonna do first is the Y character. And the reason we're gonna do the Y character is because that's in the working directory. If there's changes in the working tree, I wanna highlight red and I wanna break. I wanna get right out of there so that it'll, so for example, if it's a folder and there's multiple files in that folder and let's say some of them are yellow, some of them are red, well, I want that folder to light up red, unless all of them are yellow, and then the folder can light up yellow. So that way, if you're looking at it, you'll know to dive into the folder to see what's going on. So if $y equals m, or $y equals that question mark that we've seen earlier, then we're gonna return or we're gonna update our status to return to a different style entirely. We'll open and close single quotes so we can use double quotes in our style equals, uh, open and close double quotes, background dash color colon. And I'm gonna do, I've already kind of felt these colors out. You guys can use whatever colors you want, but these are the ones I'm gonna use. FF9494 for red, which isn't quite red, it's more salmon-y. 
And like I said earlier, we're gonna break if that happens. So if we find one that's red, we're gonna break right there. And then it's gonna get out of that loop and return red immediately. Uh, same thing for, not same thing, but similar thing for dollar $x if it equals m, or if dollar $x equals a, as we saw, meaning that it's a new file that's been added. We're gonna update our status stout. We're gonna update our stout. Status underscore to return equals, open and close single quotes, this one will be yellow. Style equals background <clears throat> color colon, and again, I've, uh, well, we're just gonna use yellow. It'll be very simple. It'll be yellow. Don't even need to comment that one, but I like to comment things, so I'm gonna leave it. Continuing on. Really don't even need this line. Probably don't need this line, but we're gonna put it in there. All right, control save. Tiny file manager, refresh. And we see we've got some red. We've got a router.php. Interesting enough, test.php isn't there. I wonder if I totally deleted that. I probably did. What happened there? Test.php. Oh. Oh, I put test.php in here. Okay. Yeah, so if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see it. Let's close the, uh, the console here and we'll actually be able to see it. Yeah, files.php, test.php. Really what I was trying to do is actually put that in the uh, classes folder. So let's put uh, test.php in the classes folder. Uh, yes. Okay, refresh. There we go. Now if we go into classes, we've got those folders in there. And the reason why I wanted to do that is I wanted to test that whole folder idea where if one was added and yellow and whatnot. So let's do just that. We can see right now that this is largely Let's clear this to make it cleaner. Git status s. We have three files that have been either modified or untracked. Our classes slash router, our files.php, and then our classes slash test.php. And we can see that these are all lighting up red, which is cool. Cool, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Let's add files.php, git add files.php, save, refresh. All right, files.php is now lighting up yellow, cool. And you'll notice these files, because there are no changes, are just, they're looking normal. So that tiny file manager is styled the way that it would look. Normally, that's your cue that everything's good, and then if there's something changed, you get a little highlight. That's kind of cool. Uh, okay, so let's try making a uh, change to the status in that folder of classes. Uh, we'll do git add test.php, and we'll come back and we'll refresh. Okay, so the folder of classes is still red, which is what we wanted. But if we click into it, we see that test is yellow and router.php is yellow. Or, excuse me, router.php is red. And that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted to see that folder light up red if anything in that folder was red. Okay? So let's add router.php now and go back out to this. And now the folder lights up yellow when both, or rather all, items inside that folder are yellow. Perfect, that's awesome. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. Now if we get status, we'll see that everything's staged and ready to go. We're gonna hit git commit dash m, minor changes, we'll just call it minor changes for now, and voila. We've committed it, now if we hit refresh, 
everything's back to normal styling. There's no changes. You have a clean working directory. And now your tiny file manager will let you know if you've got modifications in your folder, in your working tree that are different than your index. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and push these changes to our GitHub. So we'll go git uh, push, yeah, git push, Zach LinkedIn comes resolving deltas. Now, if we go back to GitHub, we should see those changes reflected, or at least that commit. Zach writes code. I committed one minute ago, two commits, minor changes. All right, guys, there it is. We just improved our tiny file manager to help us out a little bit. So we know when we're looking at it, if we've got some things that we need to add or commit and push to the remote. I guess it doesn't really tell us if it's pushed to the remote, but it tells us if we need to add and commit to the local. You guys know what I'm talking about. All right, cool. We'll check you guys out later in another video. See ya.